What's up everyone, I'm Zane, and today we're going to look at one of the newest rivalries in Melee. It's between me and JMook across 2022. Alright, so the first clips we're going to look at is our matches from Genesis 8. And I remember before I had to play him in Winner's Finals, he had beaten like Plup, Nun, and Lod, I think. And I just remember thinking to myself, I was like, not me. I was like, I don't care how good this guy is. I, I can't give it to him that easy for his like first like super major, and he just gets to win for free. I was like, no, I can't let that happen. But as I was playing him and win his finals, I was like, this guy is actually gonna be <laughs> a problem because <laughs> it's Marth Jeek, and he's also like really, really. He was proficient at it, but I don't think he had a cohesive game plan going into it, particularly versus me. Uh, I don't blame him either because it was kind of a Cinderella run. So I definitely had the like preparation of matchup experience on my side. Uh, even then it was pretty hard. His Sheik specifically was already the best at utilizing Crouch Cancel, which is going to be like a major trend looking at the rest of these sets. Just like CCing anything that's in close quarters, like a bad down tilt or like a falling fair, and getting a grab off of that. And I could tell that, like, it, it didn't happen as much in these sets, but I could tell that it was something that was part of his game plan. So that was concerning to me. And also, the fact that he plays, like, pretty stylishly and uses that as, like, kind of momentum. Especially, I think, with the crowd on his side at Genesis. You saw him just do, like, walking across uh, Cody and stuff and doing like crazy punish trees i was like nope not me i'm not letting this happen to me and then in grand finals i've played really confident versus the sheik and when he switched the fox i remember just thinking like i was like it doesn't matter i was like this is still grands with genesis like take it seriously i could tell from the first few moments like you, you can kind of tell uh when your opponent is like going to be super legit and his fox was definitely like fast and proficient and i was like i am not going to let this happen to me uh, so kind of an anticlimactic way to end it, but I didn't really care because I won Genesis. Alright, yeah, this set, I had lost to Plup Winner's Quarters and then played JMook like two matches after. And so I was definitely finding that Sheik was something that I needed to revamp, even though I think I'm pretty good at it. And this time around, JMook came in with a way more solidified game plan that was honestly really frightening to deal with. Hit way more uh, CC punishes on like my unsafe aerials and down tilts. His punish game tree had gotten a lot better, uh, like understanding how to combo Mars at the exact right percents, and just like really, really crazy that he it was. This was after Genesis. He was able to turn this around, and uh, I knew that I had to to revamp it a lot. All right, this is like my least favorite <laughs> because. I was up 2-0 in both of these sets. This asshole just <laughs> started like playing 10 times better the last three games. The big trend here was dealing with him at the ledge and not being able to pressure him the way that I pressure other Sheiks. And that's due to either like really good CC options off a of ledge or really good escape routes like doing ledge dash, dash back. And he po this was the first time I had seen him like pop off, pop off. Uh, Gotta give him a handshake for that. Uh, you know, I'm not an, I'm not an asshole. He, he, he got me. <laughs> uh, by the way, sickest kill I just got, and it's not in the video. I upbeat him off the top, which you rarely see with Marth. And after I got that, I was like, wait a minute. But unfortunately, Marth in these situations against Sheik, like, I can't believe he missed that. But Marth against Sheik in these situations is very Sheik favored, just because she can do anything into fair, basically. So I was looking for some cheese, that's why I'm on the ledge, and I'm just like, please just give me like a down throw downer or something, but also that counter was super clutch, but he was definitely, like, having the fresh stock was definitely pretty, pretty rough. And that set also went the same way, like, up 2-0, like clean, and then he just like crawled back and started adapting. So I had made a lot of changes versus Sheik, but I knew that I had to work specifically against stuff around the ledge um, and also like kind of tweak my punish game a little bit. So the only characters that I had lost to at this point in my 2022 was Sheik and that was in Jmook, Plup, and Leffen. It became a big 
big focus for me in that summer is to just like revamp my Sheik game plan. Uh, I have pages of notes <laughs> against Sheik in particular. The big problem is that all three of these Sheiks and Plup, Leffen, and Jmook play drastically different uh, game plan wise. It's like I'm playing a different character essentially based off the ways that they play and, and they're all effective ways of playing the matchup. So juggling those things and like making sure that I'm in the right mode when I play each respective player is like the key. Yeah, that was a problem when I'd warm up with like different Sheiks. It's just like it's not the same as playing like someone like Jake. Like they all have their different habits and stuff. Alright, this one is like the most one of the most satisfying. For context at this tournament, I had to beat Axe and Hbox, who had beaten me the last times that we had played. Obviously Axe was like a demon for me. And Jmook had beaten me the last three times in a row. So this was this was crazy important for me. And the big changes that I had made on this one, my Sharking versus Sheik got a lot better. Just like not letting her down um, on stages like FD and Stadium. And in that way, I felt a lot more comfortable in my counter picks. Um, I was doing a lot better job of like utilizing my own crash cancel game and like close quarter situations. And the biggest change I made, I think, was the way I interacted with him on the ledge. Just having ideas of the different ways that he was getting grabs on me from corner situations and trying to mitigate those. It was very high level, I will say that. It's, I think, two people that understand very well how the other plays and that's in part due to the fact that Jake and I play a lot on net play. We understand each other's habits a good deal and so there are a lot of like really close range interactions that happen really quickly uh, that were just really high level. Just like ways of playing around CC, um, movement, like dashing through and not biting first with a grab and being content to just move through each other and wait for the right opening, I think is one of the coolest parts of Melee too. So yeah, this one was super satisfying. I definitely did not want to get bracket reset and crumble. I think this evened it up to three to three in our set count. This one made me question my FD counter pick because I won the first game solid. He wins on Dreamland pretty close, I think. And then FD here, I just wasn't able to like, I mentioned like sharking effectively um, on the stage. It just didn't didn't happen the way I wanted to. Like, we'll see what happens here. Like up tilt, up air. I think a thing that, to his credit, that he started doing a lot better is his landing mix-ups got a lot better. So like I mentioned the other two Sheiks, Plup and Leffen, they were both way better than Jake at getting out of combos and landing on stages like FD and Stadium. So I was able to juggle Jake a lot more for free, but I remember in this set thinking like, oh, he's made this like conscious adjustment to like really mix up his landings. And it shows like, it, it, it's crazy that how big of a deal that has when I counter pick on a stage like FD. But yeah, this was a rough tournament for me because I also lost to Johnny in winners. I had the reverse 3-0 on Axe, so I wasn't completely, completely upset but had to make some more changes after this one. All right, this one actually might be the most satisfying because this is like the opposite of the Gommel set where I get destroyed the first two games and then I destroy him like the, the next three games were like convincing. I, I don't mind Dreamland too much just because of all the space it gives me and I mentioned that like movement through that Marth and Sheik have a lot and I think that often tends to happen on a stage like Dreamland. I remember thinking like, the reverse 3 that I got in on Axe at Riptide helped my mentality a lot in this set, and it, it kind of snowballed for the rest of this year, like my other Axe set and my Moki set, of being able to pull off reverse 3 0s. Like being down 2 0 and just thinking, I'm absolutely going to win this. Like, that's, I had those conscious thoughts when down 2 0, and I think it's really healthy to have when you're competing, because so often I've been down 2 0 and been like, well, fuck. <laughs> like, I'm still going to try, you know? I'm not going to give up, but I didn't have like that positive affirmation in my head and yeah I gave him a taste of his own medicine I could tell he was disappointed so I, at first I felt a little bad but then I was like hey wait I I went through the exact same thing at Gommel and I would have beaten Hbox's ass after in grand finals so I was pissed about that one because that could have been another major the adaptations that I had made for those next two games were the culmination of all those things that I was talking about with the improvements that I made versus Sheik so I do think that this set was the best Marth Sheik I played in tournament those last three games if you're looking to study some Marth Sheik. Having Jake in the scene and having our sets be so close, I think 
I mean, I, after I lose him, I think about it before I get to bed each night, man. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how I get my ass beat, and it. I just want to beat him so bad. And doing that all while, like, having a friendly relationship and being respectful towards one another is, I think, pretty cool. Uh, because we're both, I think, pretty competitive people, but can also uh, maintain that level of respect. It's highly motivating uh, to have that person. Um, push you like that. I, I think Jake and I are also very similar in the ways that we process losing sometimes and we come back stronger and maybe I'm wrong, maybe he sees it different, but I do notice some similarities, especially when he plays like Hungrybox. It reminds me a lot of like when I played Hungrybox in 2019. He still, I feel like not hit the prime of his career, which is scary to say. <laughs> like really, because he hasn't got, he's just going through the experience. He has all the talent, but he's just going through the experiences that are going to mold him into like a very mentally strong player. Like heartbreak after heartbreak is like the worst feeling in the world as a competitor, but um, it makes you into something scary, I'd say. So I really look forward to all the sets that we're going to have. I'm sure I'm going to be hurting, he's going to be hurting, and sometimes we'll both celebrate, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. The fact that it all stems from that Genesis set in Grand Finals I think is really cool, and the strides that he made as a player, just so insane. I, th I think his year in 2022 reminds me a lot of my year in 2019. His skill level is obviously insane enough to win big tournaments. I think it's only a matter of time for someone like him, with like he has a really good mentality and uh, obviously the skill there but he's had like a lot of second place uh, disappointments. But I think like people should be scared of JMook for like 2023.